come back. <laughs> or hello, Jumbo. Jumbo. Uh, what? Hola. Um, <laughs> She's bilingual. Kitty. Not bisexual or bisexual. <laughs> Homosexual. And that's all right. You can come out the closet. You ain't got to. Welcome back to another episode of Can't Carry with Ricky. And we carry. So when I need the floor, I need the floor. Saying stuff about so this is real shit. I'm, I'm Troy. I'm Damon. And forgive me if I'm giving y'all, uh, are you afraid of the dark tea right now? But my lighting is just acting <laughs> yeah. real crazy. Yen, uh, your thoughts. Episode four, oh the God. come up New York. The big question. Congratulations. Oh, 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 oh my God. I thought this episode was decent. Um, the end was really, really cute. Like, you know, a proposal. Um, I feel like this cast is really, some of the cast members, let me say, are kind of just really focused on like rebranding. Uh, most of the cast members from like season two, you know, yes. that whole fiasco. But I feel like they a lot grown, of those that, yes, have grown and they're using this season as kind of like a uh, opportunity to grow, kind of rebrand themselves. But yeah, I definitely see the growth in the um, the veterans. I can mm -hmm. see that compared to like some of the newbies. Uh, yeah. The dinner mixer redo. I just gave very much like, can I switch you for a second? You can't do open heat. You explain yourself. Um, mm -hmm. I just said Nakai talks entirely too much. Um, they talk in <laughs> circles. I put so, in my notes, um, no shade, but are they are they playing vegetable when there's a camera in front of them on purpose? Like, <laughs> if this is gonna be Nakai's personality all season, I just do not have time. <gasps> mm -hmm. I, I, I just, just gotta get this out the way. <laughs> I was um, like, if she. <laughs> If she say y'all one more time, I said, girl, are you broken? Like, why do you keep saying the same thing? Oh, we get it. We get, we, we heard you. I don't know if he was doing it on purpose mm -hmm. or if it was just something that like, you know, they just do out of like a personality trait, Like, but it was very like, calm down. Like you're doing a lot right now for no reason. You always want to talk about how we're all adults. We're all grown. And then it's like. The second some drama happens, you revert back to a child, so. Baby, that was one of my points that we're gonna talk about that later. So I don't understand where Nakai is confused on where Ty is coming from. Like, Nakai lit this damn fuse during the like rooftop mixer. And now every yes. time that fuse comes back around, it's like, oh, I don't understand like, like the issue, the problem. And it's like, well, you're in this group and you caused this issue. So now you have to deal with that issue every time you're around this group. Yeah, Literally and I noticed that's a, right, and I noticed that's a common thing with people that are maybe uh, toxic or messy. They mm -hmm. don't like to live in the past because they don't want to be accountable for the shit that right. they did. Nakai keeps saying like, "Oh, well, I live in the present." Y'all bringing up shit that's oh, and it's like they're bringing up shit that was like yesterday or the day before yesterday. Like they're not bringing up shit from last year or two weeks ago. It's like. It's your, it's, I feel like it's his way of not trying to take accountability. It's like, oh, well, that was yesterday. Why didn't you bring it up mm -hmm. in the moment? And I'm like, a lot of people don't bring up shit in the moment. Like, I don't think that that's a valid response to somebody bringing up some shit that you did. Like, but it, that just comes into taking accountability. Very true. Uh, Nakai also said something to Spanky like, uh, well, if you had spoke up, Ty... Ty took all the heat for you because you didn't speak up, so this wouldn't be happening. And I was like, well, girl, if you had just minded your business. Exactly. It's like, at this point, what are we doing, though? Like, yes, it's kind of redundant at this point. Yes. It's literally, just, like, we're just going around in a circle. So, And I get it, like, you wanted them to have a conversation, but clearly it wasn't going to be productive because you brought it up in front of the whole group. If you really wanted right. them to, like, talk about the issues, you would have had it. You would have brought it up while they were alone. You wouldn't have brought it to the entire group. So it's just like, right. y'all are trying to evade, you know, accountability. You were bold enough to speak to them when they stood up. So be bold enough when they have something to say after. Like Exactly. My Andre, you, I walked into the group situation like, uh, Andre and Spanky. Like, I don't know what's going to happen with them. Like, why would you even bring that shit up? And then now it's coming back on you every time you're around a group. and it's just Because they want an issue. And I feel like, we kind of right. talked about how like some people they come into shows and they're like that's the person i'm gonna beef with that's the person mm -hmm. i'm gonna have an issue with and i feel like they kind of used andre joel and nakai as like a gateway into this beef with spanky mm -hmm. because like you said like 
it has nothing to do with y'all. Like Joel was trying to make up some bullshit about how Spanky was talking shit about his brand that flopped. Mm -hmm. That didn't even make any sense. And it's giving bullying a little bit. Like it's kind of, especially since they have no real issue with him. Mm -hmm. Andre is the only one that has. I wouldn't even say. I wouldn't even say bullying. Uh, I, our last review, I said it's giving pick me. I'm gonna redact that, and it's giving choosy ho. <laughs> Shout out to Agnes. Ooh, use a choosy hoe. Yeah. It's even choosy hoe or uh, look at me, a look at me ass bitch. You know that's Ooh, one thing I can't I like that. A look, look at me ass, ass bitch. bitch. Yes. And there's a lot of that going on with the newbies this far. Like mm -hmm. I just put in my notes, Joel wants a, a, a moment like so bad. Like he has he's all so this smoke bratty. for Spanky. Anytime Ty like just tries to kind of interact with fucking Joel uh, with, with, yeah. with, with what happened at the mixers, he's, he's guarded. Like, oh, his I don't personality is it. very weird. Yeah, and it's yeah. very like, like I said, like a brat. Like, bro, you're a grown ass man. Like, if right. you want to leave, leave, but don't right. throw a tantrum. That's not right. cute. But it's given. I want the cameras to follow me. But yes, and they yeah, won't it, because this drama is stupid. Oh, Spanky trying to address everyone. I guess from last episode, he was trying to like address what people were saying. So I was gonna come on here on some like rah rah shit. But you gonna come on. I'm sure the polygraph was going like this. Like, the bitch is lying. She's lying. <laughs> it's giving oh, yeah. very much Cynthia Bailey. Mm -hmm. Very much that. Um, he was like, you know. I was going to come here, rah rah. And I was like, You was going <laughs> to come here, rah rah. Like, bitch, what? It's the fact that Spanky be lying. Like, bro, you are not that's not your that's not your energy. Yeah. It's like I said, not Spanky uh not delivering. I guess oh boy, jo Joel bought some hats and he never got them. And then Spanky was in the confessional, like, oh well, I didn't have a website and blah 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 blah. And I was like, Oh my bitch, you still got product? Like, what the fuck am I order? I don't give a fuck about the website. If I order something, I order, I expect product. Yeah, um that's true. while we're on the, the 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 subject of spanky spanky versus andre yes. um this is this where was, i kind of this was interesting very this, interesting this drama i was here for this drama this yes. very interesting because mm -hmm. andre went down the line yes without kind of being you know what's crazy andre was being more extra throwing the shots at spanky than he was when he was being direct and i was just looking for this conversation See, you gotta know how to handle me i handled you with nothing but care when it came to anybody, you brought bitches around me who didn't like me. You brought bitches around me who didn't mean me no good. You brought bitches around me. All right, now. Because Baby, Spanky was when just I tell like, you, I don't remember that. What happened? I, Andre literally laying out the issue down. that they have with Spanky. And Spanky's just like, you dragging it. What bitch is she dragging it? She'll prove it. Tell her right. what's going on, Spanky. <laughs> Um, it was almost poetic the way Andre laid the shit out. Like, and I, I put him on the love the way Andre speaks because Andre was Andre was getting him together. together. Like, I was like, okay, I, it, that moment actually made me like Andre even more. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't like. I mean, I liked Andre already, but like, I was like, okay, because I'm like, <laughs> that is a real friend. Like that, it, mm -hmm. like, and the way that he explained it, like, mm -hmm. if I'm like. Like, I agree. I'm like, if I'm friends with somebody and I see somebody else talking shit about them, I'm not about to be right. friends. I'm like, for what? Right. Like, right. And so it's like, it's weird because you know how, like, sometimes, like, something to you may be common sense. Mm -hmm. Like, you wouldn't do that. That's kind of something that you would think most right. people would assume. Right. And it's just, it's interesting when you see that disconnect with other people when they're like, okay, well, no, you, this wasn't common sense to you. Cause Becky was like, you know what I said? I asked him before. I said this thing gave me uh, Monique when she laid into Lenard, aka Charlemagne the God. <laughs> Love y'all, my babies. Well, we appreciate and, you. And, and, and I thank you for giving us the platform. Thank you for joining us. Eddie, Lenard, I appreciate you, brother. Oh, oh Eddie, oh, Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. Eddie. <laughs> That's the energy we moving with? <laughs> when she was addressing uh, Charlemagne by his government, this is what yes. this thing gave me. But I was on the board with you. Audience, let us know how y'all feel about that. Mm -hmm. If you have a let friend and your friend, your friend is kind of yes. like just fucking with somebody that you hanging with somebody that you don't fuck with, kind of like the ops, even if they aren't the ops. Like, let us know how y'all would feel about that. Like, do you feel like Spanky was in a wrong, or do you feel like Andre was, I guess, just kind of over exaggerating? Or I feel like Andre right. was in a right. 
I'm the no, same definitely. person. If I don't yeah. listen to somebody and you call yourself my friend, you shouldn't even that person even look at you, bitch. Look at the ground. Don't make no, <laughs> don't, no type don't of even make eye contact with AS. Like in this scene, this was a perfect scene to show mm-hmm. how fucking like how snaky spanky seems. Mm-hmm. Like it was annoying me because I feel like all of this stuff was starting to come out about Spanky, but he was still just sitting there, like, right, almost like he didn't care. And I feel even like even Reese, because <laughs> you know, every time I say that name, every time we say that name, some shit happened. Child, let so me make sure I like that call out or some shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> Andre was lying when he said that he didn't care. He obviously cares mm-hmm. about this situation. Um, you know, just even when he was reading um, Spanky at the rooftop, the first networking event, you could tell that he cared a lot and he felt hurt. And mm-hmm. it was just sad to see how hurt Andre felt and how, like, disconnected Spanky was in the right. scene. Right. You know, I feel like Spanky is always disconnected. I don't know what's going mm-hmm. on with him. I don't know if that's just his personality or what, but he always seems very disconnected. Like, he is not, like, he's here in the scene, but he's not right here like right so yeah i don't know but yeah that was crazy to see i did want to uh shout out fitz for because at first the first time i watched this i was like fitz why are you speaking up but right he kind of <laughs> he was kind of being solid basically Fitz was like when me and spanky was going through whatever we was going through andre was ten, andre was 10 toes down for you and right. when it came down for you when it came down to you having andre's back you didn't return that so that's right. a bit that's a bit iffy. So I wonder who was talking like, shit about Andre. Uh, do we know this person? Know. Are they in the the come up universe, the Gemini Films that's universe? I want to know. Because um, question. yeah, I, I'm, question, I'm curious. I, I did say also said that I thought that it was really dope that um, Fitz sat down. O'Neill was really welcoming. You know, they exchanged words. Uh, mm-hmm. Basically, just grown man shit. They very uh, grown man shit. I even put that in my notes. Down. I, I think he apologized or um, something to that nature and mm-hmm. O'Neill received it and they just moved forward. So I was like, I'm just living for all this maturity. Not all right. of it. I mean, because not everything's mature, but some of the maturity that we got these four episodes into the season, I've just been living for. Speaking of uh, performances and music. This is Showcase. And music. This is Gerald um, Showcase. I'm not um, you, baby, but I said that I was living for this performance. It's, mm-hmm. it's always really cool to see anybody in their craft just be confident, confident. and comfortable, mm-hmm. especially artists when they're on the stage because you could just tell like they're at home. But I said they're that I was really living for yes. this performance. Like it's really dope to see like this side of fits. Like yeah, um, definitely. He just seems more focused, um, just like driven. I'm just I just really like this this new. I guess this this season of Fitz, like I'm, definitely, I'm yeah. I just said, you know, he was adorable up there. I love how supportive the crowd was, and I love how he seemed very on his stuff. Like he seemed very comfortable. It seemed like he's practiced, like he knew all his words and like all mm-hmm. of that. So it just it just flowed together. It flowed together really well for him. Um, I said, not him singing about shooting up somebody club. <laughs> Talk about putting it in somebody's guts and then shooting up their club. And I'm like, this is a lot. <laughs> this is not safe for work. <laughs> Baby, don't play this at your uh your niece's uh <laughs> your niece's fourth birthday, cause not so you know, me. you know when, when somebody says shooting up the club, I, I is it pop smoke or is it Bella Noche? Think we got time for somebody getting shot the place we gonna have a good time at? No. Ooh, I think he was talking about pop smoke. Wow, you hey, definitely man. talk about pop smoke. Okay, what's um, a piece of pop smoke? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I just thought it was cute. He had a, a good stage presence. Not really much mm-hmm. to say about it. You know, it was just a nice performance. I did say that I liked his fit. That that jacket that he had on. I want that top. Okay, I want that top. Uh, audience, also let us know how y'all feel about the performance. Also, let us know how y'all feel about fit this season. Do y'all prefer mm-hmm. fit season two or season four fit? Um. Ooh, I feel well, like most of you are going to say season four. Well, you know, it might be two. some messy bitches. 
that might be season two. You know, so there's probably some messy bitches out there that's still living for that T page. That no shade yes. kind of got this twirled in the streets of New York. Anyway, um, I do want to say, like I mentioned earlier, I feel like every scene after the mixer was something light, something refreshing. Uh, yes. I feel like this scene was one of those refreshing scenes. Uh, the housewarming. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, Andre. Andre is going to turn a look no matter what. Andre was dressed for the island. Not yes. a housewarming. Definitely dressed for that. Okay. Um, I, I, I was looking for it. I'm just assuming that this this season was filmed during like the spring summer. No charades. Summer, Andre definitely. Andre's legs have been out. I just said O'Neal mm -hmm. is dating Messiah's older brother from the Come Up Atlanta. Wait, for real? Police, he looks like Messiah. It was a joke, but he oh, looks like Messiah okay. from okay, the okay. Come Up yes. Atlanta. Like they yes. look like they could be like high brothers, but they make a really uh, very handsome couple. Um, like yeah, I, I said, said everybody couples, showed up with their booze. This like season. with their All boyfriend, their friends. Yeah, I was here for it. Um, it's interesting that we hadn't been introduced to O'Neill's boo yet. Like he was just kind of in the background. Maybe he's shy. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I know he's not on the show, but like I don't know. It, I didn't know. I knew he had a boyfriend, but it's like I just thought that they would like lead into it versus like him mm -hmm. just showing up. I said, uh, so they do like a flashback of O'Neill at the uh, the second networking event, I guess, mm -hmm. when he was trying to speak and kept getting interrupted. <laughs> I said, I I laughed when they showed the footage of him snapping on them because he couldn't get a word in. I would love to have the respect. I would love to have the respect and talk about and talk because I feel like I've been getting cut off every time I've been trying to take them. But yeah, I would like to... Um, like, because he had all this like nice persona, and then he was like, mm -hmm. You know what? You bitches are rude as fuck. I'm trying to <laughs> <laughs> that's the real O'Neal. You know, that's the real blue right like here. Mm -hmm. He be getting, he be in this confession with his white woman voice, and I need <laughs> I need uh, the voice that he brought, I need that voice. Um, you can tell O'Neal kind of wants to be in charge of the girls. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that he shouldn't be or he should be. I just feel like, you know, he's trying to step into that space, especially him being kind of a veteran. I feel like he feels like I want to lead, you know, the girls. I want to mm -hmm. give speeches. I want to put on events, which, you know, is fine. But uh, I guess not everybody is receptive to that, which I think is very interesting, especially somebody like Nakai with a big personality. She's like, uh, yeah, you're not leading us we're all a collective mm -hmm. we're all here we're all adults but i didn't feel like oh. o'neill was kind of like trying to like lead them or be like the leader i think he wants like everybody to like respect each other so like if one person is talking i can see that you know all this talking over each other we really don't get anywhere um i feel like his approach yeah. maybe could have been a little different but you know like like you said nakai having a good personality she probably took it Probably the way she took what Ty was saying, it's kind of like a defense mechanism where she's listening yeah. to respond, not actually hearing right. what Neil was saying. This is where I felt like Nakai was like about to have a mental breakdown or something because he just kept saying like, but he said if y'all want to talk, then maybe y'all need to go away. Tashin, did you not say y'all? Doing too much, relax a bit. Just like. Are you okay? Like, I think you need to calm down. Like, you really make maybe production needs to like take you away for a second because you are like <laughs> you're like overheating right now like you're doing a lot so um yeah i was just like calm down girl um i do kind of see a little bit of what i see what you're saying about o'neill like i do think he wants the best for everyone and he wants everyone to respect each other mm -hmm. but i also kind of see a little bit of him wanting to be in charge of the girls not that that's an issue i just think he he's trying to create a space for the group and he's trying to lead the group which i don't think is an issue i think you know i don't think there's anything wrong with a group having a leader or somebody that is like coordinating things and like kind of facilitating things mm -hmm. but um i do feel like uh he does want to be in charge which i feel like is is needed i mean i feel like he seems nice he's understanding of both sides i feel like nakai is just like kind of immature and i feel like maybe they're not receptive to like what what he has to say because they're not in the space to receive it yet i feel like they're okay. still stuck on like arguing about nonsense or i don't even want to say nonsense they're just stuck on arguing about things that don't necessarily matter in the broad context of things um and i think o'neill is looking at the big picture like if y'all don't respect each other then y'all can talk until the end of time like y'all are never going to be on the same page if y'all don't respect each other and right. you should respect each other because y'all just met 
<laughs> so it's like I don't I don't know why the respect was so quick to be taken away. But I also had to roll my eyes when Nakai was like, "Oh, I wake up today thinking about today. I don't think about the past. So why are you bringing up? You should have brought it up in the moment." And I'm just like, "That's not how people operate. That's not how mm -hmm. most people operate. Like sometimes you have to like take a, a day or you know." A couple hours to really think about what happened because you don't want to overreact and it's right. like honestly maybe you should learn to do that because mm -hmm. i feel like that is better for like conflict resolution like if you're gonna like just react based off of like what the person said in the moment you might misread the situation and then boom we got a whole nother situation so right but uh, but, uh to wrap the scene tying his boyfriend because yes. i feel like we spent so much time talking about like Kyra's or Neil, but Titan's boyfriend, yeah. they get engaged. One second, one second, one second, one second. So. Uh, at their housewarming, so I thought that this was like a really cute thing. Very cute. I sound mm -hmm. like so happy for Ty just to see like his progression from like season two of the come up to right. where he is now, just him being like more self aware and learning mm -hmm. his triggers i think that's one of the really big things that's made me connect with ty like yeah this this season is that he knows his triggers so he's like you said i could be arguing with y'all back and forth but at the end of the day what is that going to do for me so i'm right. just glad that he knows himself and he's found love like he's found somebody to make him happy like and the fact that i think another thing that i really liked about this scene is that o'neill said that him and ty have been friends for like over a decade so mm -hmm. for o'neill to be sharing this moment with ty i thought like it's dope because they went from bad boys club together to now the come up and ty is now engaged so i was just like yeah. kind of living for like their friendship like this brotherhood that they built and for O'Neal to get to witness, like, one of his friends, like, get engaged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I kind of figured the boyfriend might propose just because, you know, the talking about, you know, if we move to L.A. Right. and moving as a fiancé. So um, I thought that might happen. That would be the best time, I think, to do it. But, yeah, I thought it was it was very cute. It was good to see their reactions. I'm assuming mm -hmm. that was when he actually proposed. Like, that wasn't – they weren't recreating anything because Ty's face was so, like, yeah the the reaction seemed very surprised. genuine like yeah. he really did not you know think it was gonna happen so it was just really cute to see his face it was cute to see o'neill was crying like you said yeah, baby like, o'neill was shedding up tears but i think yes. that was like one take <laughs> that was like, right yeah real, real. it was very like and it was just it was cute to see them get like emotional because you can mm -hmm. tell that they care about each other right so um i i love to see that um and they were just cute like i loved like you know even like after they got engaged, like just them looking at each other, like from time to time, like, oh my God, we're engaged. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't believe we did this. Like, it just, it was so positive and so yeah. like, I'm so excited for them. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, it was, it was a very cute scene. One of the like, oh, man, I can't believe it. I'm looking at someone look at me and want to spend the rest of their life with me. And I'm realizing that maybe this man loves me more than I love myself. I'm looking at I love it best scenes i've seen from this show so shout out to jim hey. and I for capturing it um and of course let us know what y'all think in the comments below like hey. are you guys there like are you guys happy that like how do you guys feel about like ty and how do you guys feel about mm -hmm. like his progression um yeah. i guess this wraps up the end of our review um mm -hmm. as always uh like comment subscribe yes uh, please go follow uh make sure you subscribe to gemini films as well yes, they yes, have been putting yes. out like amazing content for like mm -hmm. forever now so um yes. if you haven't make sure you go check out bad boys club season seven baby yeah. go check out some of our reviews for like <laughs> you. that that was a moment <laughs> monumental yeah. iconic but yes uh this has been key and carry <laughs> where we key and we carry <laughs> i'm troy i'm damon and we will see y'all in the next one. Peace. <laughs>